I love tips for model railroading, and here are four all-time classics that are some of my favorites. And some of these are pretty darn easy, but they're very effective. The first one is making frosted glass. You can use that on your passenger cars, you can use it in structures, and it's as easy as using some Scotch brand magic transparent tape. Um, I'll show you first what it looks like on the windows that don't have it and the windows that do have it, and you can see it really makes a difference. And it's as simple as getting a piece of the tape off, laying it down over your window, and burnishing it with your finger so that you don't get any air bubbles in there. And once again, in about, what, five seconds, you've got some frosted glass. And should the, the, uh, the, the tape get uh, some paint on it or get marred, it's as easy as just pulling it off and redoing it. That's a simple tip. Um, model structures, as you know, um, sometimes have warped walls, sometimes have dings in the walls, and you'll have some joints that maybe don't match up very well, and uh, uh, it's not, it doesn't make for a very good model. So there are two ways that you can fix this. Uh, the first way is with some liquid styrene, and this is something that you create yourself. Uh, liquid styrene is nothing more than uh, plastic cement. I happen to be using tester cement here. Uh, there's nothing magic about using that. And some leftover pieces of styrene that, that you'll have from projects, from uh, various projects around your layout. And it's as easy as pouring a little bit of the um, uh, cement into a jar, and then as you get these little pieces of styrene, just tossing them into the, uh, uh, the plastic cement. They will dissolve over a period of a couple of days, and you'll wind up with uh, some uh, uh, goop, in essence, that is really liquid styrene, uh, and you can make that as thin or as thick as you want. Uh, the stuff that I'm using here is about the, uh, the thickness of heavy pancake batter. And then you take your um, toothpick, and again, I'm using a, a micro brush. I've pulled the brush off of it after using it for something else so I can reuse it again and getting a, a little uh, droplet of this liquid styrene on your, uh, on your toothbrush and painting it in to the crack of your, um, of your, of your building, the, the place where the joint is not matching up. Um, you can put it into dings like, like you'll see here. Um, the trick on this is to remember that because it's liquid cement, um, it will attack the plastic, so you don't want to go slapping it all over the walls, but again, paint it kind of neatly into that crack. Um, and then when you've got enough in there, let it set, let it set overnight, and it may take a day or two because, again, it's liquid. Um, what will happen is that it will shrink a little bit. You'll have to come back and uh, um, uh, do another application of it. And once the, uh, the, the styrene in there cures and dries, you can sand this and you'll wind up with a joint that is perfectly flawless. You can paint it um, and you'll never even be able to tell that there was a crack there. Another way of filling these kind of gaps is by using uh, ordinary baking soda. Um, this is right off the shelf in the grocery store. What you'll do is uh, pour a little bit into the crack, um, uh, uh, sand it in there with your finger, and then put a couple of drops of uh, cyanoacrylate cement in there, CA in there, and the, the baking soda will absorb the CA and harden as hard as a rock. This is not my preferred way of filling gaps. I really like the liquid styrene, but where the baking soda really shines is on the backside of corners of buildings. Um, if you just put some baking soda into, the, uh, into a corner joint, sprinkle it in there really well, uh, get a nice fillet of the uh, baking soda, drop some CA in there, and you'll see that the, the uh, baking soda totally absorbs that CA, and you'll wind up with a joint that's as hard as a rock, and on your structure um, it will be extremely strong. So that's two ways of filling um, uh, joints, uh, one with obviously baking soda and one with liquid styrene. The last tip for modeling I really enjoy, and that is creating uh, loads for flat cars. Um, you can use what's called blister packs or uh, bubble packs. You'll find these on all kinds of products, especially in hardware stores. Here's a bubble pack that is uh, uh, on some magnets, and you can see that I used that to make the load on this flat car. Um, there's, there are bubble packs on razor blades. This is actually my favorite right now. This, is, this came for, uh, these are stair uh, gauges that go on framing squares. Um, 
uh, cut the uh, blister pack, the bubble pack off of that, put it on a freight car, and it looks for all the world like transformers or rooftop compressors for an air conditioner or what have you. Um, it's easy to do this by um, using some facial tissue and, and getting yourself a good shaped uh, blister pack. I'm using one here from a, uh, um, a line level. And it's, you get yourself some white glue, put some white glue on the um, blister pack, use a paintbrush, an old paintbrush if you want, really soak that on there, get a, get a nice um, coating of the white glue on there. And once you've got that on there, you'll use your facial tissue and just cover it up. Now, your impetus is to um, uh, get it nice and tight on there, and the, the, uh, what you really want to do in reality is have a bunch of wrinkles because they will look like uh, the tarp wrinkles that you'd find on a classic uh, load on a flat car. When this is dry, when the white glue is dry, you get uh, some colored paint. In this case, I used uh, gray. Paint that over. Um, and then cut it all out and mount it on your flat car. This particular load, the blue load here, came off of a, uh, a nail set. It looks like it could be a missile or a, um, a, a drainage ditch uh, uh, culvert or something like that. Once that is done though, what you'll want to do, and you can see this hopefully on the, uh, on the blue one, is emphasize those little wrinkles on the tarp. And you do that by dry brushing. The, the technique of dry brushing involves getting some paint on your uh, brush and then taking most of it off. So you'll you get some white paint on there. It doesn't have to be white. It could be just light blue. That works also. Getting most of that paint off and then very lightly brushing it over those wrinkles on the, uh, on the tissue paper. And the wrinkles will wind up by picking up some of this white and they'll look like highlights, like sunlight highlights. The last thing to do is strap your load onto the flat car. I've used some Easy Line here. Uh, I like Easy Line because it bends and, and is not uh, as prone to breakage, but you can use uh, thread, you can use uh, scale model chains. Uh, and that is an easy way to make some interesting looking loads for flat cars. And another advantage is you can put weights inside these uh, blister packs, bubble packs, because they're hollow on the, on the back side. So rather than putting the weights for your flat cars underneath, you can weight down those loads. So there's four classic tips for building models on a model railroad.